I decided that I would do another post-gym sort of stream of consciousness talk related to what looks like the coming crypto bull market, the speculative mania known as the crypto bull market. Since I did my last video, what, about a week ago, something like that, it looks like now it is definitely in the zeitgeist. I see what everybody's talking about. The mania has begun, people are heating up, and the sentiment is, yes, we're going into another bull market. And again, it's all about sentiment. So whether we're in a bull market or a bear market is really all about what are people feeling, what is the sentiment, and underlying it, as I talked about in the previous video, if you haven't watched it, go back and watch that very quick, is sentiment is has been, when it comes to crypto, sentiment has been all about a uh, narrative of some sort, some sort of a buzzword, if you will. And in this case, the buzzword is most definitely going to be Web3. I see that, I've, I've actually been predicting that for over a year now. And this is what it looks like is being built. Again, we still don't really have a definition for Web3, but that's okay. We didn't have a definition for, let's say, like ICOs and tokens, really, what they were, even though they were out there. We didn't really have a full definition for DeFi. I feel like we still don't, um, but it's not important. What's important is that people think that this word matters and that it's, that it's going to be of value. And so they're trying to front run. Investors are trying to front run and say, okay, let me get involved with this because I don't know what it is, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be big. And so scammers will use that, and they've been using it. You'll notice that it'll be like they'll say, oh, it's a blockchain, machine learning, AI, something, Internet of Things platform. Oh, take my money, take my money, right? And none of those things pan out. But in this case, we do have, there is a, a kernel of something that's moving through, and that's what I wanted to talk about here is that I wanted to hopefully inoculate some people who are going to be investing. Like there's a lot of people who are going to try to take this opportunity to buy more Bitcoin and that's fine. And the price probably will go up. But the thing that you should be understanding about the current Bitcoin or BTC maximalist narrative, that is the number go up narrative, is it's fine to do that. It's fine to play number go up. If that's what you want to do, the number will probably go up over the next two years, by the way. I don't know by how much. Maybe it'll double, maybe it'll triple. That's not the most amount of money that you could make. There's people here who are in this next bull run who are gonna 100,000 X their money. The people who are starting projects and who are involved very early on the projects that are gonna emerge from this. Uh, one of the, the, the biggest, let's say, I don't wanna call it a lie, but the biggest problem with the number go up narrative when it comes to BTC is that they always frame Bitcoin's value proposition as it's going to defeat the, do the US dollar, the fiat dollar. Uh, this is not the case. This was never the case. Um, and as a matter of fact, if we look through each of the steps of the previous bull markets, what you see about Bitcoin is that Bitcoin actually makes the US dollar more valuable because it makes the US dollar more useful. So I tell people the story that when I first bought Bitcoin, the reason I was buying Bitcoin was because I was in an all cash, US dollar, paper, physical currency business, and I w didn't want to put my money in the bank. I wanted to continue using cash as cash. And I could purchase and sell BTC, Bitcoin, it was the only thing you could at that time in terms of cryptocurrency, I could do that with cash. So what did that mean? That meant that, my, that BTC actually made my US dollars more valuable because I didn't have to store them. It wasn't even about number go up. But I had a whole bunch of money in a safe, and believe me, the anxiety that was associated with that for me every day sucked. And I also couldn't use that cash, those paper physical dollars, in online purchases. And BTC, when it first came around, what everybody was using it for, and not that I wanted to use it for this, but just what everybody was using it for was for Silk Road. So basically they were buying drugs, something that you simply could only have bought before with physical USD. So now I could take my USD physically, purchase Bitcoin, and then I could buy something that I could only previously purchase with the paper USD. Well, do you see in that case, it doesn't destroy USD. It actually makes USD more valuable, more useful, and therefore drives demand for paper USD. And that's been true at every step of the way. Particularly true in the last hype cycle, because what was the last hype cycle? What was the big thing? Tether. Of course, the 2014 hype cycle was all about, or 2013 hype cycle was all about tokens. And out of that came two big things. So in 2014, right at the height or at the, 
as the hype cycle is going down for 2013, Ethereum is released, and so is Tether, USDT. And Tether is first released as a token on the BTC network using a token protocol called Omni. So it is on BTC that USDT, the digitalized open cash dollar, is first released. So it is Bitcoin that enables USDT. USDT, of course, makes US dollars more useful, more valuable. There's no question about that because that's what DeFi was all about. The whole thing was with DeFi was you would take your digital US dollars, USDT or USDC, and you would put them into these decentralized exchanges as a liquidity pool. You'd basically loan them your dollars and then you could earn 3%, 4% back automatically which at the time was better than buying U.S. treasuries. So it made, but it's all about the U.S. dollar because <laughs> these are U.S. dollar backed reserve currencies. So this is making the U.S. dollar more valuable. You can use U.S. dollars in a way that you couldn't use them before. You could not use them in blockchain lending before. So what does it do? It increases the demand for U.S. dollars because it increases the utility of U.S. dollars. The same thing is gonna happen with Web3. We're going to have digitally native. You imagine an in-game currency where inside the game, for instance, everybody's earning U.S. dollars. So right now you have like whatever, World of Warcraft gold or whatever. Just imagine that that is scrapped out. And this can be done tomorrow, by the way. <laughs> and that's why I believe it's going to happen. But imagine that that's just taken out, right? And instead of whatever the in-game currency you have is, it's actual digital dollars like USDT that you can leave from out of the game and go directly to an exchange. And you can exchange it in the same way that you do USDT. Or maybe it will be USDT or USDC. So this is what to think about. And it's well, I'll, I'll talk more as we go on. But the first thing that you need to do is understand this Bitcoin makes and all of crypto makes US dollars more valuable. It's also one of the reasons why we are not going to see it. It is actually the whole rise of crypto. You could view it as a sort of a um, defense mechanism by the U.S. dollar to stop itself from losing dominance. The dominance of crypto equals the dominance of the U.S. dollar, the further dominance of the U.S. dollar, the penetration of the U.S. dollar into other areas. So all of these places that have wrecked economies where they're like, Bitcoin fixes this. Why are these people buying Bitcoin? Because it's a proxy for the U.S. dollar. Because it's denominated in U.S. dollars. Which means that since it's denominated in U.S. dollars, what can you be guaranteed of? You can be guaranteed that most of the trades of Bitcoin, most of the liquidity, is in U.S. dollars or U.S. dollar equivalents, such as USDT and USDC, which is, of course, the trading pairs, the, the base currency of every exchange in the world. So... The more crypto, think about your favorite crypto, your favorite shitcoin, right? Go on an exchange and try to buy your favorite shitcoin. What do you need to have in your account to buy your favorite shitcoin? It's going to be USDT. There's a USDT trading pair for everything. And it's the main trading pair. If you go and you see what's been mostly traded, it'll be USDC, a USDT for every tether, for every single crypto. So that's the U.S. dollar. This is about the continuation of the U.S. dollar as a global reserve currency, and it's not a bad thing. The U.S. dollar is just an extension of a global reserve currency that has the idea, at least. It's changed in form and name, but it's thousands of years old. You can draw a line. We can draw a line from the Tyrian shekel, which is what is in the money changers table that Jesus is turning over, which is what the 30 pieces of silver that's handed to Judas is. You can draw a line from that all the way to the US dollar currently, because the global reserve currency is always the product created by the, the dominant sea power at the time. So the Phoenicians, the Venetians, the Spanish, the Dutch, the British, and the Americans go down the line every single time. So that's like a deeper understanding of currency that uh, maybe I'll talk about. It's not short form. Talk about I talk about it in Bitcoin Mystery School and I write about this, of course, in Counter Markets. So if you have not been checking out Counter Markets, 
Countermarkets.com. Go get your first issue for free. I want you to go and pick up past issues so that you can see that pr the predictions that I've made on this are correct. My article this month goes into depth about what's coming, and it also draws upon an article I wrote 2022, July or August, that basically predicted the moment that we're in right now and predicted the exact cycle, the exact timing. And there's a lot of that. There's 80 past issues. We've been doing this for seven years now. But it's going to get really exciting over the next two years because all of us that are involved, from the editors to the writers, we've been through this many times. We see the cycle. And since we are all about trends and, trends and strategies for maximum freedom, that's actually our tagline, this would be the time to pick it up if you're not subscribed. So countermarkets.com. I'll keep doing these. You know, this one went longer than I would like, 10, 11 minutes, but I'll try to keep them a little shorter. I'll keep doing these and narrate, and hopefully we can give you some valuable information as you step into the next two years. All right, I'll see you next time.